Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to be implementing the um, TensorFlow concatenation front end in Ivy. Um, okay, so let's get straight to it. Uh, this is actually left over from the previous video. Um, so yeah, let's first have a look at what the signature looks like. So TensorFlow concatenate. It's actually concat. Maybe there's an alias. Nope, it's not, okay, so TF and cat. Okay, this looks like it's quite nice and easy, thankfully. There's just two arguments of, of note. The name, I don't think is really gonna be necessary because I think this, this is about naming the operation on the, on the, yeah, just to kind of recall it later when looking at the graph and so on, when it's compiled um, and in TensorBoard and so on. Um, yeah, so this is not really gonna be something we, we use, uh, not least, at least not in the beginning, um, where we don't have a way for Ivy to kind of track the names of operations explicitly. But maybe if we do, then we can um, we can handle this. Um, anyway, so yeah, so let's get started. Let's also again revisit the grouping to make sure that we this has also been done sensibly. Um, so let's go to front end TensorFlow. And then what we had before is mathematical functions, which is what both add and tan belonged to. Um, so what is that here? Can we see where it was? Is it just in Python? Uh, okay, it's all here. I can't remember actually how these are grouped, to be honest. Um, I can just see where everything is in this namespace. Uh, I mean, there are other things like linalc and image, but uh, is yeah, well, no, it's just the TF namespace itself. Oh, it was deprecated. Um, well, that's a bit annoying because that seems to be the one that we were looking at. Um, so it's. These are classes. And I guess this is a sparse operation, sparse concat. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to find the categorization. Compat, V1, experimental, keras. So these are gonna be, um, so this is apparently deprecated, but also it's the only place that I can find the function. Raw ops, no, this is what we said, it's, Classes. I'm not sure. Maybe TensorFlow doesn't support its function API anymore. I don't think that's the case, but um, yeah, let me just check how we've grouped this uh, in our issues. Uh, so kind of like, yes, it is kind of here. So, so where would concat be then? Um, Raw ops operations. But this is a mistake, I think, because I'm just a bit surprised that they're capitalized because this suggests it's a class. Um, oh, it's right there. Let's have a look.
Yes, it does just perform the function, but it's a slightly strange, slightly strange decision to capitalize a, a fully functional function in Python. From my understanding, but I, I might be wrong. This is just my understanding so far at least, but. It's a reversal of this. But this is not an alias for TF concat, which is what we're using. So, um, okay, well, um, I mean, there is no grouping, it seems. There is just functions. Um, with concat being one of them. Um, there is these modules. And then there are classes. And then there are functions. So um, I actually believe that um, that yeah, we, we should not be doing any grouping in TensorFlow um, because I, I don't think there is grouping at the moment, not least in the, the latest version. So therefore, um, and again, this might change, but right now um, I'm just gonna have everything for TensorFlow in one place because we're only concerned with the function API and it seems like they're all just ungrouped pretty much. Um, I mean, I'm just going to change the functions and we can, again, this is all just kind of organization. This might change in future because we realize it's better organization. There's a better um, way of organizing these or maybe they reorder it themselves and then we actually do find some useful categorizations. But for now, I'm just going to change this because I can't seem to find any such grouping. But if you find that the current commit is, oh, I didn't mean that. Um, if you find that it is now containing groupings, then this is because we've noticed that there are some better ones and we've changed it. But at the time of recording, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and there's only like three right now, so it's, it's fine to do this, but as it grows, we might need to do something a bit more clever. Um, okay. Um, um, Okay, so it's just values access name. Oops. Um, and also just to say this is actually a mistake. These raw ops, I don't think we need to be adding. So so this um, this to-do list issue can likely be closed and we can just focus on a much smaller subset of functions. Um, okay, so return ivy.concat values access okay i think that's it again we're not going to bother with type hints yet but this will probably change in future um so again please check the um the contributor guide should always be your ground truth um so now we're gonna test it so we have um da -da -da. yeah we have the test add test tan and now we're going to add test Cat. And again, just because of how the structure of this is, we're going to just borrow from NumPy's because there is a bit of a helper that's required. Um, um, although Jax is better because NumPy's got quite a lot more going on actually. Um, Jax is much more stripped down, much more similar to TensorFlow. So. We can use this as a starting point, I think. Yeah. Okay, and then we can just obviously make all the necessary changes. So again, this helper probably will refactor 
very soon because it's now all over the place, duplicated, but um, I won't do that just yet. Um, front ends, TensorFlow, concatenate, no, concat, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, I think we can pretty much do this unchanged almost. The only thing is the name is different again, so we have values and axis. Um, so values and axis. We don't need to provide an argument for name. Um, there's no out argument, so we can hard code out to false. Actually, again, this should, eventually these will all be keyword only, um, just so it's much clearer. We don't have to kind of check, oh, what's the third argument? Um, and when that happens, we will change all of these to keyword only, but for now, I'll just keep it as it is. Test, um, let's just do TF concat. And I think this is completely agnostic to the framework. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it has to be. So, okay, I think we're ready to give it a try. And let's just test it for its own backend. I think that's normally the best, that's how I normally start. Um, because you know that that should be working because it should pretty much just be testing against its own function. It should be the same function being called um, on both sides of these sub equals pretty much, provided the IV bottleneck isn't causing errors. Uh, what? Okay. Let's try that again, just to make sure it's not something strange. Okay, what about this one then? Okay, one small thing, I'm just gonna change the tensor flow, but. Um, am I doing something stupid then? So this is that, this is that, this is that. A native array framework. Um, I mean, this was literally exactly the same as the one that works for Jack, so. Maybe, probably I have not correctly updated the, um, the names here, so. No, that looks good. And TensorFlow is just imported. And the other tests were working, so I should actually probably just read the failure then. Weird though, just because this is exactly the same as the one that works in Jax. As very one of position, maybe it's this. Can I spell something wrong? IV function, maybe I didn't put, maybe I put concatenate by accident. Did I do that? No. Um. Yeah, um, 
I'm interested what's going on here. Let's try and get to the bottom of it and actually read what's going on. It seems like the test doesn't even start. Okay. I mean, maybe that's a sign that... Um, I don't know what's a sign, that PyTest or Hypothesis are a bit non-deterministic, or PyCharm's integration of them at least it takes a bit of time to initialize. I'm not sure what to say. I do occasionally have it where tests don't run properly. Um, and then I spend a bit of time looking for bugs that don't exist, like I just did. Okay, well, that's good then. That was quicker than I thought. Um, so let's increase the number of um, examples. Oh, it's already at 50. So that's pretty reassuring then. That seems to be working. And to be honest then, that means I think we can end the video, most likely, because... Oh no, we've only tested for TensorFlow though, so let's now... Um, let's now test for... No, let's not have any argument here. Um, and let's test for all of them. Okay, nice, so that works. So now let's push that then, and then we can wrap this video up much more quickly than some of the others. Um, so, yeah, I'll just add everything and check it out. That's good, that's good. I'll re reset um, comp test. Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, so um, okay, and we're done. Okay, that was shorter than last time. Um, uh, okay, so in the next video, we're going to be doing torches concat function or cat, I think it's called. Um, and yeah, and then eventually as the videos progress and I do a few more, we'll start to actually refactor things a bit and find some useful locations to have helper functions which are um, front-end agnostic. Um, for example, already, um, this arrays, IDX, and data types, which we use for all of the concat um, tests um, in the front-end and also in IV, is some logic that we should perhaps just add to the general helpers file that already exists, or maybe put it somewhere else. But um, these are the kind of things that we should continue to do. We should get test passing, we should duplicate code in the process, we should then every now and then revisit and think, okay, where's the most duplicate? Where's most of the duplication? What's the best, most elegant way for us to refactor this? And this should be a somewhat of an iterative process. Um, but yeah, so this will this will continue to happen as the videos evolve. Um, okay, but for now the test passing, so our job's done. Um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.